basically, if you were born in the summer of 1975, you probably owe it to this album. Julian Decades. All right, man. You jump out to a three to one lead going into our final two point round. That's the music round. Uh, you have the option. Do you want to start off or do you want to defer? Uh, since I just went, I will defer. Uh, Joe, you have the honor to start this round. Oh, oh, do I? I accidentally just gave myself a second point there. So apologize. There we go. Um, <laughs> I don't apologize. You know what? Screw everybody. No, uh, let, let's talk about August 6, 1974. Uh, Basically, if you were born in the summer of 1975, you probably owe it to this album. I uh, give you Barry White's Can't Get Enough. Wow. Uh, it was Barry White's third studio album uh, contains obviously his arguably biggest hit, uh, Can't Get Enough of Your Love, Babe. Uh, it also had the single You're My, <clears throat> You're My First, My Last, My Everything. Okay. Uh, yeah, both made it to number one on the Billboard R&B charts. Uh, they were one and two, respectively, on the Billboard, uh, the U.S. Billboard 200. Uh, it was a certified gold. It, the album itself ranked number 281 in Rolling Stone's 500 Greatest Albums of All Time in 2003. Uh, so, I mean, a lot to go with there. And it was a really big year for Barry White just in general. He also got two Grammy nominations in the same category uh, when he wrote songs for the Love Unlimited Orchestra. And he also had a uh, movie that he scored and did the soundtrack for called The Together Brothers. So he was kind of on fire in uh, 74. And it all, well, you know, it all started with this bad boy. Can't get enough of your love, babe. babe. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love it. Very wide is great. All right, guys. So my music selection this week has actually been credited as the first release from the funk metal genre. And it's an album that kickstarted this band all the way to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I give you the debut album by Red Hot Chili Peppers, titled The Red Hot Chili Peppers, released August 10th, 1984. A big single, the big single off the album is the infectious grooves of Get Up and Jump, although True Men Don't Kill Coyotes had a video made for it and actually received some airplay and support from MTV which helped support the band and expose them to millions and millions of new fans. Now, the album actually failed to chart on the Billboard 200, though. Uh, the major knock on the album is that the band didn't actually sound like a cohesive unit at the time, mainly due to the revolving lineup. Ketis and Flea had said over the years that they actually prefer the demo versions of most of the songs, which were recorded with the original lineup with Halil Slovak and Jack Irons. Uh, a review I found in the Orlando Sentinel by Richard Dettendorf reads, a mix of funk, Tex-Mex rock, and bits of acid rock. It's made palatable by the expert musicianship and tongue-in-cheek tongue -cheek lunacy of four musicians. Bassist Flea Blazarni, vocalist Anthony Kiedis, drummer Cliff Martinez, and guitarist Jack Sherman. They live up to the description red hot when Kiedis sends machine gun-like bursts of lyrics through the wires as on the up-tempo get up and jump. But you don't want to dance as much as you actually want to jump. The tunes range from deranged jive spells to mocking protests. And then the article actually closes with the quote, uh, the music burns on the way down, but it's worth the pain. I give you the Red Hot Chili Peppers in stores August 10th, 1984. Okay. California. <laughs> All right, Man Crush, why don't you wrap us up on this game with your music selection? All right, first off, I think this is great because we have a band here. We're finishing up with music, and all three of us came with three different genres, which doesn't always happen. Like, we'll get three of the same shit, but everything's different here. So let's go to August 9th of 1994, one month before the debut a bit one month before his debut album dropped we got the lyrical stylings of this legend a month early via the release of his first ever single and listen like up to this point in my life i was like 15 14 somewhere around there i predominantly listened to rock metal punk alternative whatever but i was never that big in a rap at all like to this point 
then I heard this guy when I was in high school, I was for, like a freshman in high school or sophomore in high school. And I don't know if it was because he was East coast or however you want to categorize him, but I was instantly in on this rapper. And this was the first rap CD that I ever purchased. I still have it in my collection over there. Uh, this singles release, I put this guy on the map. It put his label bad boy on the map. And even like, even the critics loved this song. Every, every review I found in the papers, I didn't find one that said it, this was a shitty track at all. This is 1994. So obviously this was a huge video on MTV at the time. It was playing constantly, uh, hit number 27 on the billboard hot 100 hit number 14 on the R and B charts. And it absolutely destroyed and hit number one on the hot rap singles chart. Obviously, uh, aside from like being in Rolling Stones top 500 songs of all time, it's also on like a dozen best of lists. So it's like one of those songs. And, and you know what? Maybe it's the dedication of this song that really hit home for me at the beginning of this one. Much like Biggie, when I had teachers in high school, that never thought that I would amount to anything. So when I heard this, I was locked in. And you know how it goes. Like, fuck all you hoes. Get a grip, motherfucker. <laughs> and this album is dedicated to all the teachers that told me I'd never amount to nothing. To all the people that lived above the buildings I was hustling in front of, called the police while I was trying to make some money to feed my daughter. It's all good. You know what I'm saying? It's all good, baby, baby. And I give you Juicy by Notorious B.I.G. And that was released on August 9th, 1994. Fantastic. Boom. Yeah, yeah, boom. It's one of my Dude. favorite rap albums of all time. It just I has love, a great yeah. yeah, I love so, Notorious B.I.G. Yeah, me too, man. I used to be a skateboarder, and that was my jam <laughs> when I skated. That whole I album. I, and I <laughs> jammed Biggie Smalls. Yeah. Yep. You can listen to that, like, track. Well, track one was an intro. But you can, like, I remember listening to the intro, like, all the time. Cause it was on CD and just going from like one to 13 all the way through that friggin' yeah. CD, like all the yeah. time. So good. Yeah. It's fantastic. It just flows. It has a story to it. It's almost like a concept album. It's, and this is, it's a, it's like yeah. one of the best like rags to riches, yeah. not just raps, so like just rags to riches stories of any song. It's like, it's so good. All right. Let's toss it down to the guys from moon fever for their final verdict on this game. Baby, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Man crush Monday. Good. It was another win. It was, another it was win. all a dream. It, it was all a dream. <laughs> all it was all a dream. dream. <laughs> all right, man crush, you win this game. Congratulations, man. Pull out another victory. But you can't really argue with Biggie Smalls, man. No, it was, a, it was a solid year. It was a solid Hell year. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Guys, I meant to ask you, I wanted to ask you this at the end of round three when you're bringing up uh, Bruce Springsteen and stuff. Your name, Moon Fever, is that like a nod to Tom Petty at all? Accidentally, I think. I mean, we all knew a full Moon Fever and stuff. Yeah. But yeah. when we were talking about it, we used to joke about it with each other because we partied all the time. <laughs> and we woke up late. And so when we, we were like, oh, it comes and goes, you know, sometimes we get our shit together and write a bunch of songs. Sometimes we just go experience what Hollywood had to offer. And that's when we had a month of moon fever. So. Yeah. Because we were I was like, I'm moon more than we were. In yeah, the sun, the sun, so. yeah. <laughs> that's what, dude, your, your logo is bad. I need that t-shirt. Cause yeah. your logo is like one of the, uh, just, yeah, yeah, send us a, in, uh, just an ear, ear, ear dress. And, uh, oh, we'll fucking sweet. Back. Sweet, man. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I'll rock that it. shit all the time. That, yeah, one of the, call. just the way that it's fit, like everything about it is fucking fantastic. So tell us Thank about you. tomorrow. I mean, this is, our show is going to come out next week, so it's already going to be out. So everybody else, you can go watch this already, but tell us like, what are you guys doing on Twitch? you guys are dropping this new song new video and all that stuff yeah we're dropping the new video for our single single all summer tomorrow on twitch via spin magazine's i guess twitch account and that'll be at three well i guess it's already out but three o'clock uh yeah. go check out our video there that's you what go. we're trying to say yeah <laughs> just do it when yeah. you're done with this just yeah. go google moon fever single all summer and check it out because yeah. it's gonna be awesome you're gonna yeah. love it all of your videos yeah. are awesome 
Like, yeah. and this, but this one has a little corn dogs. Pretty, this one's got. This one's pretty funny. This one's pretty. You know why they're awesome is because we all do them all last minute, <laughs> yeah. and, they're, and, they're, and there's and there's no limit. So like, it's like yeah. okay, let's try it out. Yeah. And like with Corey yeah, and Wolfie, yeah. they're crazy. Like we're crazy. Yeah. We'll travel all over the place to play music. They'll travel all over the place if they bring their camera. So yeah. we're like, let's go to the middle of fucking nowhere with a <laughs> car and almost get shot by gangsters in the desert, but we're going to get a video out But of it. does it look Sweet. great? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Wait, so, has that actually happened? Yeah, yeah. yeah. that happened at the payphone yeah. video. The payphone video, yeah. We were, in job. We yeah. were out in the middle Paul of nowhere. Desert. Yeah, Paul Desert. Oh, this. dude, I know that area. All right, you got to tell us. Like, so what, what happened? We had this very expensive historic car yeah. that we rented. That we were not allowed to drive in the desert. Yeah. By the way. <laughs> Sorry, by the way, we're gonna take around Venice. Yeah. We're just cruising around Venice for a couple days. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's late at night, it's pitch black. We got all these cameras. It's just us, and a couple questionable, questionable drive-bys went by. And yeah, we, where they we would cut the headlights, out. and they would. Yeah, it was. It got yeah, a little, car with his headlights cut off. Right in the old time. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was fun. It's beautiful out there. This the life. video for Sing All Summer we did in a very tiny town, my hometown, in the Bible Belt of Texas, called Amarillo, Texas, and we went to the good old home plate diner. Which great burgers and great curran dogs and curran dogs and uh, <laughs> three plugs. Nice. Yeah, yeah that's what. I, and uh, I met we, my what? <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what are you saying? You met what? <laughs> what? <laughs> you can't stop. <laughs> like, met, you say you met... met somebody there. Yeah, that was a joke. Um, oh. so, so, yeah, was a joke. Uh, you gotta watch the video and you'll get all this. These, Sing these all summer. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, oh, wow. dude, all of them are on YouTube, so you guys can just check out Moon Fever and just watch them all. They're all good. All their, all your songs are roughly like three minutes long too, and they, they just smoke right through. You guys are yeah. like real. When they they first pitched you guys to us, and I listened to, I think the first one that popped up was Cocaine. I was 10 seconds into the song, like after the, the whole intro part. And I was oh. like, sold. I was like, <laughs> let's like, do it. You're just like, boom. Man. Yeah. I was like, it's fucking great. I was like, let's, let's go for it. And I've been listening to that song on my way home from work. It's definitely brings you up after a long shit day of work. That's just hell yeah, that's great. I'm not going to say you want to do cocaine, but you could live through somebody else doing cocaine. It's a bi- so yeah. It's vicariously too. <laughs> you, would, you, yeah. wouldn't, you would be blown away by, by, uh, how much people love that to ask us about that after the shows. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, how much cocaine did you do before? <laughs> I've had a biker lady show me some, show me some stuff. Yeah. Her boobies. One yeah. Time. We yeah. can cuss on you so I can see that. Yeah. Guy. We can yeah, see that. Can... He's like, yeah. I love that song cocaine. And it had some in there. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, uh, you want to buy a shirt or, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh we got cutoffs. So you guys just finished up touring with uh, with Hinda, right? Or are you still That's correct? Yeah. You just finished. Tell us about that tour, like how that went with them. Anything crazy? We always talk, ask people. I think you guys are the the. You guys would tell us the stories. I think yeah. if anything crazy happened, you would say it because we get we do get a lot of bands that are kind of shy about saying it. I don't know if you guys would be. Like uh. what? There's what some was... stuff you just can't say. Well, there's a bunch of things <laughs> I can't say. No, I'm just joking. No, no, no. No, um, well, the shows were all unreal. Like, the crowds were amazing. Hinder is so sick. Yeah, those guys are really cool. Yeah, super, super, super cool guys. Um, oh, the last night they pranked us. Oh, yeah. The, yeah, yeah. So, that's a great story. <laughs> bands, you know, they, they'll prank the openers when they go on tour with them. So, it's our last night. And uh, we were waiting for them to see what they were going to do because we heard they were going to prank us. But the first thing they did was they took one of Greg's rack tom. He only has two, so they took one of his primary drums. Yep. Just took it off stage. Long stage. In the first, of- second song. <laughs> second, second song. <laughs> second song. Well, the and then, yeah. then they brought shots. Yeah. So they kept bringing shots every time they took. But they eventually, the last song, they even got, he even grabbed his guitar and cut. Yeah, and cut strings. and cut my my two my E my A hey, I'm on my guitar <laughs> while we were playing. Well, in the middle I, of the set, yeah. I was in the crowd singing and yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought Mitch was getting it, but then we made it out. Oh no, we made it. Out. I looked at the guy and I said, "Cut the strings. I don't need them." <laughs> yeah, took all the drums, took all the drums um, and then we partied in the parking lot till like four a.m. and they trashed the uh, and they trashed our band. We, we had a yeah. uh, we had a uh, condiments war. I woke up the next morning and I it's walked out of the hotel 
And there was about, I'm going to be, I'm going to be, give you an honest estimate here at about 3,000 Taco Bell hot packs. I'm, I'm being dead serious. I am dead ass serious. There was bags of just Taco Bell condiments everywhere. Pretty good. Yeah. Well, they like actually at the Taco Bell by me now, they started charging you to get like more than mm. two. Oh, well, I bet what happened was Mitch was like, oh, you're going to charge me? Then I want four bags. I mean, that does sound like something I would do. I'd be like, oh, yeah, Last okay, well, tour. give me all the yeah. sauce you have back, okay? <laughs> What do you have because left? me and Hinder are going to have a hot sauce battle. Let's go. <laughs> Which could get dangerous, with hot, especially some of those hot sauces. Well, what do you I mean, if you would have saw our van, you would have known that they won. <laughs> <laughs> it's the experience it's the experience going through but what do you guys have coming up after this can't say anything about that. Uh, uh, definitely check out our new single single summer uh we probably will be touring soon um just keep up to date on our social medias for you know more tour dates more drops and um yeah boom. Sweet, man. We're here real official baby check us out when are you guys coming to the East Coast? Are you coming like is there anything sort of scheduled up towards New York? I hope. Same. We don't know yet. We don't know. I haven't heard anything. Um, I'll, I mean, I'll we'd keep love looking. to go to all the people out there. Hey. <laughs> keeper, ready to go. I'll I'll definitely keep looking for that. And I don't know, like you guys are in a hotel right now. We've had like a great streak of like uh Brendan from Weedis played us teenage dirtbag acoustic. Uh, Tom Higginson from uh, Playing White Tees just did one a couple weeks back. Do you guys have a guitar? Can you can you pop out an acoustic uh, jam in here? I don't think we have one here. Yeah. Uh, I have, all I acapella. I put it at Don's house. Otherwise, we would have. <laughs> That's all right. I figured okay. I, I, there's no shame in asking. No, no, no. If we, hey, if we had one. We would have done, done, yeah, we done it in a second. Yeah. Because I actually I heard you guys do Fever. Or no, uh, not Fever. Um, what the hell? But yeah, I think it was. It was a fever that you did acoustic. I saw it online. Maybe. Maybe. It was, <laughs> it was fucking amazing. <laughs> so if you guys can't hear it here, but like go Google that one. It's on YouTube. Uh, just look up Moon Fever, Fever Acoustic. It's fucking awesome. I guarantee it. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Dude, I, seriously, your your stuff is great. I can't, uh, I can't wait till, you know, everything opens full on. If you guys come out East Coast, I definitely want to hit that up. You guys yeah. are, uh, you guys are great. Thanks. Yep. Well, we'd, love to, we'd love to do that. The only well, thing I'm anticipating almost as much as finding out uh, the details on your uncle's history, if we can get yeah, that. I know. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, hold on, hold on. Let me see on your phone. Where's my phone? Oh, my God. <laughs> no, I don't know where it is. All right, sorry. Uh, that's we'll, we'll, if we do, we'll do this again, and we'll, we'll get to the bottom of it. Okay. Yes. We'll make it's a running thing, you know? We'll do it, like, before the first round. I think everyone's, like, on the, uh, the edge of their seats. They want to know this. Yep. Are you texting him right now? You're like, dude, I'm seriously. Gonna, hold like, on. Are you a spy? All right, hold on. We'll just find out real quick for the people. Oh, straight oh, oh, man. He's a spy, bro. He's not going to pick up. When you finish Here. recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. Leave the message. Hey, the we one? just wanted to know if you were a spy or not. If you can yeah. let us know that, please get back to your nephew and he'll let us know. Inquiring minds need to know. Yeah, like the whole audience. We're we're really we're all sitting on the edges of our seat. We need to know this. All right. Thank you. So sorry, Uncle Jim. <laughs> uh, well, we tried. We tried. We tried. What can you do? But dude, thanks for coming on. Thanks for giving me the win. I didn't even think 94 had it in it, but it did. We had a baby, baby, baby. 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 Yeah, thanks so much for having us, guys. Thank you. Hey. Take it easy. Best of luck with everything, and we'll be in touch, guys. Bye. Thanks so much. See ya. Take care, guys. Have a great night. You too. All right, Mark. Oh, my legs are so fucking sore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my legs are so <laughs> <laughs> All right, jewelers. Well, unfortunately, we're going to have to end this episode right here. But don't worry. If you'd like a if you'd like a transcript of this episode, please send a self self addressed stamped envelope to Dueling Decades. Or you could just look down on the links in the description underneath this episode. You can head on over to DuelingDecades.com, where you can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Spotify, basically everywhere podcasts are found. So until next time, Duelers, we're going to bid you a peace, love, light, and a joy. 
Have a grateful week, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.